So um, how, how did we come up with Scala? So originally, actually, it was more a, a technology-driven thing that I was always very intrigued. Can we combine functional and object-oriented programming? Um, and most people actually uh, would, until very recently, tell you you shouldn't do that. There are two different worlds. Uh, functional programmers that don't think much of object-oriented programming. Object-oriented programmers often likewise. But I think uh, we, we now establish more and more yet that, yes, the combination makes a lot of sense. And so it was pioneered by that. And then we found out that actually, uh, to my surprise, <laughs> I must say, uh, this thing actually ran pretty fast on the JVM. I would have thought it would run slower. So it, it, it turned out that the JVM was already pretty good for that. And we also then uh, found out that, yes, it's actually very good for parallelism. But that's something that sort of had been known for a while, that functional programming makes, par it, it makes the expression of parallel algorithms easier because it sort of avoids incidental complexities due to side effects and uh, lets you uh, replicate things better, uh, cache things better, these sort of things. Uh, so it turned out that, what, that in fact, the JVM was a pretty good basis for this sort of thing, and that we actually could use it for high-performant uh, parallel programming, and also that it was very good for uh, concurrent programming with the actor paradigm, so using actors. Um, that, again, is not something completely new, and that has been done with Erlang for a long time. And uh, it turned out that for, for Scala, there's now very performant actor libraries. Akka is the one, the most popular, the most performant one uh, that does this sort of thing. And that's good if you want to uh, get performance out of distributed uh, computations. So we see that quite a lot in companies who do simulation, uh, be it in financial institutions or others, where they say, well, we want to actually uh, have our simulations run on a farm of servers, on a cluster, or network and then uh, collect the results and then you have to deal with failures on that on that scale you have to deal with failures and ac actors are very good for that so they're very robust with failures mm -hmm. okay so uh, all this is was was pretty promising and then the next thing that actually happened is that we said well if you really want to go to hundreds of thousands of threads uh, this sort of scale terra scale computing then how what 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 can we do there and uh, we have a, made a proposal that's a research proposal that got funded with uh, uh, about $3 million from the European Research Council. And that is done in very close collaboration with uh, the Stanford uh, Center of uh, Pervasive Parallelism. Uh, that's the uh, groups of Kunlio Lukutun and Pat Hanrahan with whom we're working there. And there, the idea is actually much broader. The idea is to actually not only use the JVM, but also use GPUs and clusters and essentially any sort of parallel hardware that you can find. Um, and what we want to do is we, we want to define parallel domain-specific languages in a particular domain, such as simulation, climate simulation, or uh, machine learning, or uh, probabilistic computing, or f molecular simulation, this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, for each of these domains, there will be a domain-specific language defined, which is embedded in Scala. So it's really Scala, but it's 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 a particular subset and a, a library that lets you write these programs in these domains. And uh, what's specific, uh, what's particular about that is that if you write these programs, then the first thing they will do is actually not execute your problem but they will produce a representation of what they are, a data flow graph or something like that. And then there will be a specific optimization that takes into account what your program is, of course, but also the size of your problem, which you would know by the time you start up, and finally the hardware you're running on. And we have a very specific optimization for all of these things. So that's sort of where we put a lot of hope, and uh, initial results are very, very uh, encouraging that we can do that. So the first example we had was a language called LIST for physics simulation. And that, uh, the first trials we had with this program, we actually beat ha handwritten C++ code on a, on, a, on, a, on a cluster with that on first try. So that was actually very, very encouraging what one can do with these things. Mm -hmm. So let's step back. Before there was a scalar code, how would someone go about tackling the same problem? Would it be to write a massive C++ kind of program? Sure. Well, yeah. 
it, it, it depends. I mean, there, there are many different backends, but the most common one, like for list, would be C++ and MPI as the as a message messaging uh, bus for that. Yeah. Certainly, a very advanced kind of programmer would have to be um, employed to come up with that kind of solution, <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. So, so the problem is, it takes really very, very advanced programmers to do that. So, and they're in short supply, and. Uh, what we try to do with this, the DSL work is essentially to bottle up the expertise. So the, uh, the writer of the DSL and the writer of the optimizer for the DSL still needs to be an expert. But then the users can be application specialists. They don't need to know about the internals of high performance computing. That's the hope. Okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you talk today about at uh, the OzCon? Uh, I was talking about um, uh, a little bit about that, but that was just essentially the end part of my keynote. Uh, the other parts were the two other things we do for parallel computing. One is parallel collections. Uh, so we have a very powerful collection framework, also a collection framework that's very convenient to use. And uh, we, since uh, the last version 2.9, which came out uh, uh, four months ago, uh, that that collection framework can run now in parallel, and, and you get essentially very cheap performance improvements in in a lot of situations. And the other part was then the more explicit concurrency part with the act with the actors ACA and actors. That mm -hmm. those were the two talks. Okay. Well, kind of a wrap up question here, Martin. Uh, I have a publication called Inside Startups. Mm -hmm. So, what's it like being a startup today in the open source space? Because I, I think it, it sounds like it's changed a lot. Uh, yeah, it's certainly changed a lot. Uh, well, I, I don't know. It's my first startup in the mm -hmm. open source world, so I yeah. can't really know what, what it's been before. Uh, it's, uh, I, I think the, um, the invigorating thing is that you really have, can get a lot of extremely bright people together to work on this common thing. And uh, the challenge is they're distributed they're all over the world. You have to make do with that. Uh, with, uh, uh, well, um, video chats or things like that uh, to, to make things work. But it's really, it's really great to have all these people that each of them is a very, very bright mind, people who have already have put things in motion and to have them sort of work together in this cluster. That's a, that's a really nice part about it.